Today I'm going to speak with you about one of my most frequently asked questions and that is do I need to speak to a builder or to an architect first? I don't know how to start my project, I want to do something to my house but you know I, I don't know how to make a start, how to make it happen. These are like the most typical common questions that I get asked and so maybe you have some questions yourself um, if you're thinking about extending your home, doing some sort of reconfiguration, or there's some kind of things that you want to improve and you are not sure how to go about it and you have questions and you want an expert's opinion, then please comment below and let me tell you why I am an expert who could help you with some answers to that. Obviously, these are my opinion, um, but I am an expert, or we know many people would consider me to be an expert because I am an architect and I have over 20 years experience of working as an architect, including designing some really huge projects like 30 odd million pound new build high schools and many other different projects of various scales along with um, having set up my own architect practice back in the beginning of 2009. So I have been working with private homeowners since then in helping them improve their homes, whether that be a reconfiguration, whether that be upgrades and refurbishments, whether that be extensions, and all with an eco side to that approach. So if you have any questions regarding anything to do with your house extension, refurbishment, especially eco upgrades, those are things that I specialize in. So, um, and also if you have a home in a conservation area or it's a listed property, I also have speciality in that kind of architectural conservation field as well. So this question, who do I speak to first, a builder or an architect is very, very common. It comes up over and over again. In fact, just the other day I was chatting one, with one of the mums from my uh, son's school and she was asking me this exact question, which is what reminded me that this is one of those things I keep getting asked over and over again. And I am putting together a series of frequently asked questions so that I can answer them in this format and I don't have to keep on going over and over and over the same questions. I can simply point people in the direction of this video or another video that answers their specific question. So I have some notes here to my side, which is why I'm just glancing over here. Um, hi, Daniel. Um, so the key thing to, to realize when you're thinking about builders and architects is what do they do? So the builder is somebody who builds. They literally put bricks on top of each other, put plasterboard in place, plumb pipes together, connect cables, uh, lay tiles, you know, all of the actual physical building work and the management of that, getting the right people on site, getting the right tools on site, getting the right materials and products on site, making sure everything connects. Um, that is what a builder does. That is what they do very, very well. What they don't do is design. So they don't um, talk with you and, and listen and understand exactly what it is that you want to achieve. What they can do and what they will do is if you speak to a builder, they will have a look at what you want to achieve and they will um, tell you what's the easiest way to do it in terms of the practicality. So builders build and architects design. So as an architect, I don't put bricks on top of each other. I don't fit. I am actually a really, really good tiler. I've had, I've had people compliment me on my tiling skills. So I have some practical skill. I, I, I quite enjoy getting in there and doing a bit of DIY, but I am certainly never going to go out and do any tiling for any clients as a professional thing. That's not what I do but I do design. So I might design you your tiling layout so that it, you know, you've got some nice texture and pattern there within your tiles. That's something I can do. And uh, it's not something I often do, but generally the architect designs, the builder builds. So 
I would sit there and listen with to you. I would ask you questions. I would help you figure out, you know, what is the most important things that you need in your home? What are you really wanting from your home? What is going to make your life better? So I have this strong belief that we all deserve to live in a home that supports us in living our version of our best life. And that is very key to me that that I help my clients to figure out what is the best life and what type of home do they need, what specifics in their home to support that, to help that, to enable that. And I think that the best design is actually quite invisible. You don't see it, you don't notice it because it's so effortless, it's so it's so much in the background, it just allows you to live in the way that you want to in the most simplest, most pleasurable, most easiest way you can. So that to me is what good design is. And the design has to come first before the build. So first of all, you are, you are decide, it's basically designing decisions. So you are deciding what to build and then you are building it. So the decision, the design is what you do with an architect and the building the putting together those designs making the the paper the ideas and the paper drawings into a physical three-dimensional reality that's the build so that's what the builder does so that has to be in that order now i i posted this question on my facebook profile and i had one person say no you should go to a builder first to see if they're available because it's so difficult to get hold of builders these days and that is true but actually it's always been true it's it's never been particularly easy to get really good builders and the best way to get really good builders is to go to them with a good design and a good set of information that they can then read because the best builders want to see detailed dimensioned drawings so they know exactly what it is that you want. They can put a price against that and they know that there's very little risk for them in doing the project and that they can do it. They can assess what's involved, assess what their skills, assess what the availability of the products and availability of the trades that they've got and that they can deliver that. And they know that they've got the resources for that and they can tell you when they can slot you in. So this is the best way to get a good builder is to go to them with drawings. The best way to get a bad builder is to um, get a builder to come and then they will kind of make it up as they go along. That is kind of the worst case scenario for your project. Never do that. And that can be sort of the worst possible outcome if you go to a builder first before an architect. But sometimes you will want to go to a builder first. And so what are the reasons why you might want to go to a builder first? Well, first of all, if you actually don't really need any design work to be done. So maybe you're actually just going to find specific trade, like an electrician to ch change a, a light fitting or a plumber to change, swap out a piece of sanitary ware. So maybe your, your toilet's broken and they swap the toilet out, something like that. It doesn't need any design work at all. It's a straightforward, simple project, nothing complex about it. No real decisions to be made apart from what light fitting do you want or which toilet do you want? And there's, you know, it's, it's gonna be going into the same exact same position. So there's no real design required there. That is when you may then go first to a builder. And the thing, one, the person who suggested that you should go to a builder first because um, you know it's hard to get hold of good builders. It's also hard to get hold of good architects. You know, where where are, there are architects around, but really good ones who can actually deliver a really good design. We're not that uh, available either. You may have to wait. So for example, if you would like to have my help to, to work on your project, I have three spots available in July. So if you wanna have work with me, then you can get in touch and um, 
and see if you can book one of the three spots I have available for my home design foundation package. That is the way that you can start working with me on your house extension. And like I say, there's only three spots in July. So if you want one of those spots, get in touch and we can talk about it, whether that is the really the right way for you to start your project or if I am really the right architect for you. Um, I, if, you, if I'm not the right architect and if this is not the right start for your home extension, then I will tell you. I'm not going to force you to, to work with me if it's not right. Um, so the other reason that you might want to work with a builder first, and if you're watching, ooh, I've just turned off my screen. Um, if you're watching now, put a hi in the comments below. Hi live and um, and if you have any questions, any questions about extension or home improvement or reconfiguration, anything that you've been thinking about doing maybe to your home for a while and you're not quite sure about, then please do comment below. I'm doing a frequently asked questions series and if your question is something that is coming up for me again and again and again, then I will do a video about that. So. Um, the other reason that you might want to talk to a builder first before an architect is if you don't actually plan to talk to an architect at all and you want to take a design and build route. So a design and build route is a specific kind of construction contract and a specific approach to getting your construction project done where you work directly with the contractor, they manage the process and they employ a designer to work on your design. So you will end up working with somebody, it may or may not be an architect, it may be someone who has some design skills, it may be somebody who's more technical, um, whether or not it's gonna give you the design quality that you really want is uh, much less, um, um, certain because you don't know you don't necessarily know who you're going to be working with beforehand you don't necessarily know what their design abilities are and also because the designer is in that case directly employed by the builder and not by you then the builder is the one who will be calling the shots and so you may want something but they won't necessarily give you that option and they may look at sort of cheaper alternative ways of doing it so that you are not getting actually the same quality and the builder is still able to make a profit because it's a business and they need to be making a profit to run a successful business but that means that although you will get cost certainty going down that route you will not get control over the quality. So if you're looking for a really quality finish, design and build may not be the right route for you. But if you're looking for a specific um, time scale or a very fixed cost, then it could be a good option for you. The only thing is that where, where the cost comes into it is you might not be getting the value. So it might be a fixed cost, but the quality, maybe there may be some skimps and savings made that you are not necessarily as comfortable with because um, they have to, you know, maybe something happens in the course of the project and they make some alterations to the design to make it cheaper to maintain the profitability for themselves. So that's where you don't have as much control. And another reason why you might want to talk with a builder first is if there is only one builder that you want to work with and you have no interest in working with anybody else at all. And so you want to perhaps find out when they're available and then um, figure out the time scale of all the, the design work and everything prior to starting on site based on when they're available. So. This, the only reason that I think that this could be possible where you really, there's only one person is if it's perhaps a family member, you know, you're related to contractors and, and they're the ones who you would never dream of going to any other contractors because you're gonna go to your brother or your brother-in-law or somebody. Um, otherwise, I don't think, unless it's incredibly specialist work, which is possible sometimes, 
Um, but, but usually there's always several other builders who could do the work for you. So this is a really unusual situation where you might want that to happen. And if you were to do that and you were to um, not spend the right amount of time or enough time on the design process. So design can be sped up, but the quicker that you do it, the less time you have to consider things and really think through the decisions that you're making. Like I said before, design is decision making really. Um, and, and you need time to make the right decisions, consider it from different angles, sleep on it overnight is always a good idea before you make a final decision. So um, I, it's, it's not really a good idea to push the design faster than it's, it's best to be. It's best to be a bit patient within the design stage. And there are other things that can occur during that stage that can, you know, you've not got any control over. For example, if you submit for planning approval and you don't get it. Or, you know, currently with COVID, the, the planning departments across the country are pretty much collapsed. And people are waiting months and months and months to hear anything from the planning department after their submission. The system's totally collapsed, basically. So you are um, you're not guaranteed to get planning approval if you if you're needing to get planning approval. There's no guarantee of that. And um, you may, in the extreme circumstance, you know, in under ordinary time, you know, when when the planning departments are actually meeting their statutory limited time because planning departments are supposed to make a decision within a specific amount of time. And if they don't, then they are um, kind of penalized. I don't know exactly how it works. You know, the government sets targets and they're supposed to achieve those targets. And if they don't achieve those targets, then they get some kind of penalty. You don't know what, I don't know what happens. Um, but so that means that um, they're often if there's some kind of negotiation going on, you know, that then they will be asking you to agree to extensions of time in order for that that negotiation process to be gone through. And also you may find that if you don't get planning approval, then you have to go through an appeals process if you decide not to change your design so that it could get approval. Um, and then that can take extra time. So there are lots of places during your project where the design stage of your project where things can take more time than you might expect. And in that case, it's kind of not um, not always possible to get fit into a specific time scale to meet a deadline. You know, it, it sometimes it's possible and, and the simpler and easier the project, the more, the quicker you can be. Um, but if it's a longer, more complicated project or if, you know, the decision making process is not that easy, it can take more time. Um, and so what happens if you do go to a builder first? What I find tends to happen is that what you want is not necessarily going to be understood and um, or necessarily listened to in quite the same way. It, you will be listened to, but you will be given different kind of advice to what you would be given by an architect. And obviously different architects will give you different advice as well. Um, but um, Typically, a contractor would give you advice around what is technically possible, what's easy for them to build, because they are often, um, their main priority is cost. So what they would often do is look at the cheapest way to, to achieve that for you. And the cheapest way to achieve it for you may not give you the result that you really want. So um that is something to be bear in mind that um contractors don't are not as aware of all the design options they don't think tend to think in innovative ways obviously there are contractors who are very innovative um but but generally your typical house extension um contractor is looking to um give you the the, the sort of a good decent quality and finished on time 
and in budget and their main priority really tends to be cost um, and so another thing that they probably won't consider is a no build or a low build option so when i'm working with my clients we always explore a variety of options different ways that you could achieve your vision for your home and your life and how we can meet that within the practicalities the limitations of your house the building that you have and the, and the site the piece of land that you have and one of the options i will always look at is a no build or a low build option so what's the least amount of building work that we could do and still achieve what it is that you want to from the space that you have many builders will not look at that um, if, and if specifically not if you set, go to a builder and say well we think we want to do a house extension then a contractor is not going to sort of start to dive into all the details of why you want that what you want to achieve from it what's that going to be how's that going to benefit your life um, and you know is there another alternative way of achieving that same result for you without that extension or extending in a slightly different way or reconfiguring the space in a different way so there are all these different options but if you go to build and say we want to do an extension because maybe you are, that's the only way that you can see to resolve your problems that you see that you have with your home and the builder then will say yes okay we can do that and it's going to be like this and that's not necessarily then going to result in the best solution for you and then finally they they will the best contractors will also um they will want a set of drawings they'll want a set of drawings to price from and a set of drawings to build from and they'll want them to be as detailed as possible and to have dimensions on them and if they're a really good contractor they will ask you to provide that for them and many builders now are not making site visits to have a look and to give you a price because they just want they don't need to visit site if, if they get sent a whole set of drawings they can get a price based on that drawing and they don't need to necessarily visit site to give you that price so what happens if you go to an architect first what happens is that um, if you come to me anyway I will help you get clear on what it is what's your vision for your home what is it that you need what is it that you want from your home and we get really clear about that then we'll explore different options to achieve that for you in different ways like I said a no build a low build and then maybe sort of a maximum build what's your you know what's the most that you could build to this property and and how would that work and what would that look like and how would that give you what you want um, and then I will help you to check which of your options are best for you or if you have a preferred design is that really the right design for you so let me know do you do you know what you want to do to your home have you got a vision for your home have you have you decided or are you sort of still trying to figure out what's what's possible what what is it that you really want trying to you know get an agreement with your other half like so you both on the same page with that where are you at with your project right now um, then after you've done that in, in sort of architectural jargon that's kind of like a feasibility study um, in terms of the work packages that I do that that is what is included in the home design foundation package so you will get to the end of that and then you will know what it is you want to do how you want to move forward and then what you can do with an architect is develop those sketch designs build them up to fully dimensioned detailed drawings that can be priced that can be built off and they include things like planning applications building control applications all of those sorts of things and a good architect who you know if you're paying them to do this they can also long list and short list the contractors down for you get a competitive price for you and then put a construction contract in place between you and your builder to help protect you and make sure that everyone's clear about what is what and and so if the worst comes to the worst 
then you are in a much better position. This process where you work first with an architect and then have a construction project, uh, contract in place and then the builder then builds, that is the traditional approach to designing and building any kind of construction project. And so there are the innovative methods, the design and build alternatives and these things, those are other options. There's negotiated different kinds of contracts and procurement routes. Procurement simply means the way in which you get your bills to happen. <laughs> the way that you, you buy the works and the, build, the building materials and how that all happens and comes together to get you a completed project. Um, so the, but the traditional route is to work first with an architect and then with a builder. And that is the way that you have the most control over the quality of your project. It's um, not necessarily going to be the fastest option and it's not necessarily going to be the cheapest option, but it does tend to be the highest quality approach. Um, and so that's it really to sum this all up the architect designs the builder builds you need the design first before you can build so you need to go first to work with an architect and then to work with a builder and that's it that's the summary so I hope this is useful I hope this has answered some questions if it has answered some questions but brought up other questions with you then please comment below let me know what your questions are and i will compile all the questions that i receive and continue in this series of frequently asked questions and add your question in there and if, if i find that i get the same question several times then i will make a video to answer it okay bye for now